Let's do it. Let's fizz on this, Jace. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Heads, and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. My name is Mark. And today we're talking about the title Trickster Fizz, who was released November 15th, 2011. And I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> so are we doing the champion quotes? I think that's what we said last week, right? Was that we're going to start doing our oh, best biz impressions we? or you know champion oh, impressions oh god oh jesus <laughs> i think <laughs> that's pretty good that was uh, pretty good the mighty shark stalks his prey i've never played fizz in my life <laughs> I it's fish fish. Shark! <laughs> <laughs> i know he says that when he's ulting me and then i die three seconds later Not nailed even. it thanks <laughs> Yeah, I only hate him because he's one of those champions that, like, I look at him and I'm like, no, don't, and then I'm dead, you know? <laughs> I do remember he was one of the first ones that came out that, like, had an ability that made him untargetable. Oh. And we were, like, looking at the kit. We're like, huh, that seems, can you just put that on an ability? <laughs> that seems strong, right? <laughs> Nah, it'll be fine. Oh, if if only <laughs> you knew ten years ago that Samira was going to be released. <laughs> you know, it was simpler times back then. I do it remember making simpler. at least one person very mad during a play test when he when we would do those internally. <laughs> oh, those that are the best fun. when people rage during play tests when there's literally nothing on the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that's a good You're test, though. You're just getting though. mad at coworkers <laughs> yeah. for no reason. For a champion that they didn't balance, like right. they they didn't make this shit. You know, uh. that's funny. Well, Fizz doesn't have a lot on his page. He has a bio and a short story and a video, which is someone reading the short story. <laughs> which we appreciated. <laughs> I actually didn't even watch it. I just read the oh, story. Oh, really? It's oh, good. I know. I, I'm it's like well really done. out of it today. It just didn't happen. There is some uh, concept art as well that I normally don't mention. A lot of them have concept art, but his is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so who wants to start out with the bio? Who... Mm. We actually have a uh, crediting for. Really? Oh, we do. Uh, Goulding. Oh shit! Is that is that the wiki? I assume, right? I'm looking at it now, yeah. and I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's neat. All right, I didn't take Mark. You want to do notes. the bio? Oh my god, me neither. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, let's see if we can piece it together. This will be fun. It's, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I'll lead it, and then you guys, okay. you guys help we'll out. We'll fill in um, the yeah. Fill in the blanks. <laughs> uh, so, so Fizz is a Yordle, and he is from a place, some part of the Guardian's Sea, which is part of the sea near Bilgewater. And apparently, Fizz, like every other league champion, is actually a th <laughs> like a thousand years old. Oh my god, I was so disappointed right off the bat. It was like from the yeah. first breath of water creation, <laughs> from essentially. the first bubble of from creation, the first... <laughs> first... <laughs> <laughs> from the first little blip of blub. <laughs> He's not he's not like ancient eons old, but he's pretty old. Yeah. Uh, but he used to chill and troll around with some nameless underwater civilization. They don't ever mm. give this place a name or even the people. I wondered if maybe it was like the the Marai, which are like what Nami is, like mermaids. Oh. But but they don't say that. That's just me wondering. But they seem to have had a fully functioning civilization, you know, art, it mentions them having artisans and shit, so you know, pretty well developed society, and then at some point, uh, it says the the Gigalodons. Gigalodons weren't big enough. Died. <laughs> okay, so the story, like, I I couldn't take it seriously because it's like it's talking about like the waters are warming and ancient evils are starting to rise up or ancient monsters are rising up you know, feeling brave enough to come out from the depths. And then the Gigadons. I started laughing because it sounded like a, like a kid name, like something a kid would come up with. 
It sounded like the opening monologue of an asylum movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is their version of Megalodon. Yeah. <laughs> or the Meg. The gig. <laughs> the gig. <laughs> you go from the Meg to the gig, and mm-hmm. it's not a computer movie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Cute. But yeah, so apparently the 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 gigolo dons showed up <laughs> and and kind of just lay waste the whole thing, the whole society. Uh, talks about like just thousands dying in a matter of hours, and and mm. Fizz, who I guess was out doing his stuff, kind of races back, but finds that it's just been devastated, and he I guess kind of goes catatonic. It just kind of says mm. he sinks into like a mournful kind of hibernation, which is why he's a thousand years old. Is that he just kind yeah. of you know, avatar out? He avatar out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just floating along. Yeah, um, until one day he's kind of woken back up. I guess when a handful of, of coins kind of rains down on him from the surface <laughs> and it's, he talks about, Oh, there's these big wooden fish roaming around on the surface and the, the, the creatures on them throw these gifts to him um, that, you know, obviously they must be his friends. So Fizz kind of wakes up and starts interacting with, I guess ships, people from Bilgewater. He, he ends up becoming like a lot of other league champions, <laughs> sort of a legend <laughs> slash myth, you know, where he's like, Oh, you gotta be good, or the the playful trickster Fizz. Uh, they they probably call him something else. It's gonna co- the title trickster. That's what it is. Um, yeah. It's gonna come get you, and uh, he's kind of seen as a you know kind of like a trickster spirit or or myth where he's sometimes good and he sometimes you know gets one over on you and he's not like particularly malicious, but you can't really kind of rely or trust on him either. And that's that's yeah. essentially it. Yeah. I felt pretty disappointed <laughs> by this bio. Yeah. Uh, just because of all the thing, the, the amount of things that are just in every other lore or so many other lores. I don't feel like Fizz needed to be some kind of mysterious story. Like he's he's here. He's not like a ghost or an evil demon. Like he's a he's a yordle. Like <laughs> why does he have to be some weird myth? And I I, I thought he was gonna be like more funny and fun i guess like he's a trickster but I, between this and the short story he almost sounded like a serial killer yeah right real. his trickster like, tricks were not very trickster no they're not which if that's what they're going for fine but he sounds like a 10 year old boy and i can't get behind it yeah no i think i mean we can talk about the short story because i think that's supposed to be in an unreliable narrator, I guess. Okay, yeah. Because the things can, he does in there, yeah. you know, he ties the guy's shoelaces together. Spoiler, yeah, like that's, that's pretty low-key. Um, <laughs> I think it's more supposed to be that he's just naive and doesn't quite understand the the significance of the, the coins they're throwing in. And just mm-hmm. Like, I think in the bio it even says, oh, they're gifts, they must be friends. And he's just supposed to be kind of, you know, doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I completely agree. Very grim, dark, and edgy for for something that should be really light and playful. For something called the 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 title trickster. The title trickster. He's got playful right. in his name. There's nothing very playful about yeah. this. Yeah. And the other the other thing is that all because all this crap happened a thousand years ago, it's like completely disconnected anyway. Like, what is it? We don't even get the name of the civilization. It doesn't even fucking right. matter. It doesn't right? matter. No. Yeah. It's I, all just a nothing, nothing. Yeah, he should just be a yordle that lives in the waters near Bilgewater and he fucks with people. Like, why was that? Why did it have to go any deeper? Yes. I don't know. You know, it actually wasn't until I read this story that I realized that they retconned to make him a yordle. Oh, interesting. Because he wasn't yeah. originally a yordle. No. What was yeah. it? Just like a fish just boy? A, an aquatic creature, which is okay. why he looks different than all the other male yordles. Yeah, I I was hoping that they would say something about like maybe there's a different type of yordle that live in the water, but fizz seems to be one of a kind. So it doesn't that's another thing that doesn't really make sense. Like are there other fish yordles? I don't get it. Yeah, it's I do you know do you know when that new lore was put out? Mm. I assume it was around the Bilgewater event. I think it was for the Bilgewater event. Yeah, it makes me wonder because in Legends of Runeterra, we <laughs> we 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 get a lot more like undersea sapient uh, species and like creatures, okay. and it makes me wonder if when they put out this incarnation of the lore, they're like, well, 
what are we going to do? He's 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 weird. He looks like a yordle, and there's nothing else like this. So we let's make him a yordle that fits him into the 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 world more. And if it, whereas like now it's like, well, no, we've got all these different random undersea crap. He can just be one of those, right? Just change him back. <laughs> right. I'm curious if they'll ever change him back and unyordle him. I don't it's, know. It, I would like it. It would, like you said, it's weird, and it just creates this, this big question of like, why is why is he like this? <laughs> Fizz, why why are you like this? <laughs> Fizz, stop it. Yeah. So <laughs> we we did talk a little bit about the um the the short story. I don't know if anyone wanted to go into a bit more detail about the short story, but I have I have some thoughts that, to touch a bit on him not understanding the implications mm. of the tricks he's playing. I have some some troubling things in that story that would oh. almost lead me to believe otherwise and <laughs> okay. Reinforce the serial killer. Interesting. Theory. <laughs> I'm I, now I'm curious. I guess we can run run through it real quick. Um It's a it's a quick one, yeah. Yeah. Uh it's it's being told from the perspective of a guy called Lars who actually has a couple of those of other like audio drama mm. type things and it's all kind of him telling a bunch <laughs> of stories audio drama Lars story time story time old one legged Lars. Lars yeah I was taken advantage of by yordle fish story time <laughs> <laughs> and um what is it it's, it's okay so he's he's telling the story about his interaction his, his run in with Fizz and about how you know his ship had sunk and he was kind of clinging to a rock for, for dear life and Fizz showed up and he you know when Fizz shows up the sharks that have been circling kind of Dis- you know, dissipate, and he swims with dear life to back to Bilgewater, but Fizz kind of follows along with him and kind of fucks with him for a week. It talks about Fizz, like I said, it talks about Fizz doing pretty innocuous stuff like putting seawater in his porridge, or like I said, tying his boots together so he fell on his ass mm-hmm. when he woke up in the morning. Stuff that's pretty <laughs> low-key. And the very last thing that Fizz did was uh, return to him the, the Golden Kraken, which I guess is their, their little local currency, that his captain supposedly had thrown in when they set sail. And I assume this is what you'll talk about, John, but the whole shtick is that <laughs> when you go to sail out, you throw some coins in or some sort of offering to the, the bearded lady um, or like this kind of ocean monster spirit so that you won't fucking sink. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, Fizz, and Fizz left. I mean, that's really the, the story, right? It's just this guy's run in with Fizz and how he kind of tormented him for a bit. Yeah. So in another one of the stories that Lars tells was because he mentioned in this one like oh my ship wrecked but that's a story for another time mm. um, but that's just another video you can just go and listen to oh. that story now <laughs> um, so they were sailing out and the captain threw out um, well the the way it's posed is nobody saw the captain throw a coin the captain swears that he threw a coin um, but then Nautilus attacks the ship Oh. And kills everyone oh. and sinks the ship, except for this one dude. Um, and and Nautilus is, you know, the person who attacks if you don't pay the the, the tithe toll. to the <laughs> the bearded lady. <laughs> yeah, so Nautilus didn't get his troll toll, and he killed everyone on board the ship and sunk the ship. So the end of the story, where it turns out that the captain did actually pay the tithe, but Fizz just stole it. And then got everyone on the ship killed, and then gave it back to the guy at the end, like in like its fancy box, like after a week of torture. And then that on top, buddy, fuck you. <laughs> so you think it was intentional? I disagree. I, I it, <laughs> with, with how the bio writes it, where he's just like, oh, they're they're giving me gifts, and I'm like. It's just, and, and you know, if he was like torture, right? But torture is like he put eels in his bed and, and yeah. you know, and he fucked up his breakfast, right? It's, there's the way they describe it too when he says, oh, it's a Kraken that it was. What was it? I'm trying to find where exactly it said. Um, I can't find it. But it, the way I thought it was even written was in the story was like, oh, that's a Kraken that the, the captain said he, he threw in. And maybe it was that, that Fizz took it and so it didn't get to the international bank of the bearded lady or whatever. <laughs> but it could also be that the captain, cause there's another line in the bio about fizz kind of punishing the greedy and shit. Right. Oh, and it yeah. makes me wonder if maybe the captain didn't put that offering in. And this mm. was fizz. 
I don't fucking know, right? That's the thing where it's like, yeah. it's all told from Lars's perspective. We have no fucking idea. <laughs> and I think that the, because it could go either way. Both of you have a very different approach to Fizz. Um, Mark, you have a childlike look at him. And John thinks he's the Zodiac Killer. And I think yeah. either could work. But this is not a case where the ambiguity is better. I feel like yes. I want more. Is he Jack Sparrow or is he Ted Bundy? Like, can you give me like an idea of where Fizz falls on the scale of Jack Sparrow to Ted Bundy? Where is he? Yeah, we need we need a writer to, to <laughs> get into the comments. <laughs> is is Fizz Ted Bundy <laughs> or is he Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> You know, that playful trickster Hannibal Lecter. He's always... I mean, kind of, in a way. Yeah. Hannibal's a little playful. You know? He is. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, so I could see Fizz leaning that way. I like, Mark, I like your idea a little bit more, that he's just kind of naive, because I think that fits the bio a lot more than the idea that he's malicious. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say as well, the because he's got a card in Legends of Runeterra, he also gets some Ooh. extra VO, because his, his VO in game is, is almost nothing. It's He's got mm. one of those old set of lines where it's like 20 lines, and you can <laughs> hopefully try and pull something from it. Um, different voice actor, even more childlike in, in the card game. and Oh. And yeah, I think it's pretty, uh, you know, he, he just wants to play, right? That's really all it is, is that he just wants mm-hmm. to play and have fun with his little ocean buddies. And that's you know. Annie yeah. just wants to play too. Just saying. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I I wish that they would just either expand on the fact that everyone he loved died a thousand years ago, or just take that out. I don't understand why it's there. And Fizz could benefit from something from his point of view, especially if he is supposed to be naive and childlike. That could be really fun. The idea that he thinks that people are throwing in these offerings as like. Oh my god, my friends, this is so cool. But then he's actually like fucking them all up by <laughs> taking the coins that they throw out. The feeling yeah. I get is almost um like he gives me a very Zoe vibe. Oh yeah. Who is mm-hmm. also very I mean, she's like what is it? The um She's with the breath of creation. She's like, the, <laughs> she's like a playful trickster of the celestials. Oh. And also yeah, accidentally destroys shit. Mm-hmm. When, because she doesn't understand how things work, and she's just trying to play, uh, and maybe they like wrote her bio, and they're like, "Ah, oh, shit, this is pretty similar." Um, hmm. uh, we'll just do a perspective piece for her instead, and mm-hmm. then it'll kind of be like getting one for her and Fizz at the same time. I don't know. I think they just don't give a shit about Fizz. But why? He's so cute. <laughs> he summoned Orca. He summoned Orca. <laughs> Uh, interestingly, his old bio mm. or like his original lore, um, he just kind of left his home. Um, and again, this was before he was a Yordle. So the people he lived with were just like more of his kind. Um, so he left his home just looking for adventure. And when he returned back to his home, everyone was gone. There was no like slaughter. There was no sign that they had been killed. They had just mm. disappeared. And his whole thing was that he was out looking around the world to try and figure out what happened to his people um, until he got distracted at Bilgewater. Uh, and, you know, he started playing around there and made the wrong people mad and they were going to kill him. Hmm. But then a dragon shark attacked oh. the city. Do, 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 do. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> uh, luckily, he was able to kill it. And now he and the city are besties, Hmm. so he decided to live there. I guess just kind of giving up on learning anything else about (laughs) his people. Honestly, that's kind of more interesting to me. And, and, uh, you know, giving up, it sounds like a... I mean, it's a big deal, obviously, but it could be understandable if he's been looking for a really long time. At least it would... It gives something to explore with his story. Because the... At its current state, I mean, yeah, like that whole he came back and they were all dead. So like, I guess they're gone. There's not a whole lot yeah. of, you know, space to play in there. <laughs> There's no space yeah. to play. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're dead and buried. <laughs> Don't even know what the fuck they were called. Um, <laughs> it's funny that you, that that old lore has mention of a dragon shark. Cause that's what, that's what they describe those, those gigalodons, gigalodons as is these huge dragon sharks, you know, come in, whatever. Hmm. So maybe that's a little bit of a holdover. 
I don't know. I couldn't find any reference to them elsewhere. They only get mentioned yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was going to be something, because, like, these big creatures came out of the deep, and then they killed everyone Fizz loved, and then I guess they're just back in the deep now. Where'd they go? <laughs> What'd they do? Are they still out there? Does Fizz want revenge? Does he give a shit? Clearly Apparently not. not. <sighs> He's too busy catching coins, getting folks murdered. <laughs> <laughs> On purpose. <laughs> To serve his dark master. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon shark. <laughs> he has joined them. Now that'd be interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, those were the only stories that he's like a big part of. He's mentioned in a few other ones. Um, just because by, by nature of the fact that he is legend around uh, <laughs> Bilgewater, he pops up in a bunch of other stories like he shows up in Dead in the Water, which is a misfortune story. Um, basically, they're trying to figure out how uh, a you know a pretty big Bilgewater captain died, and one of the theories is that he fell afoul of Fizz and was led out to sea in a golden narwhal costume, only to be carved up by Pike in a tragic case of mistaken identity. What? <laughs> it was a pretty wild theory that they threw out there. <laughs> Um, and he's also in the Destiny and Fate story, which I know is still canon. It's on the Graves page. I double-checked. Um, where Graves and Twisted Fate are basically hired to find an object of legend. And they say, The thing we've been hired to find is a Bilgewater legend, something any sane individual would dismiss as no more real than the title trickster or the legends of the summoners. I saw that. Oh that was so my fucking funny. Oh my god. <laughs> Riot, delete this story. You don't want to hear Please. anymore. I think they forgot. <laughs> this was well after the summoners were oh. eradicated. Yeah. Oh, why? I thought Surely we this was going to be like a little, a little, you know, tip of the hat, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I like I read that and I was like, surely this isn't canon. So then I went to Graves' page and it's like one of the only short stories on there. I'm oh, like, what? Jesus. I hope they fucking stay legends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> legends never die. Oh, shut up. Like the song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any more uh, feelings on Fizz? There's not much here, honestly. Yeah. Before John goes into the AUs, I don't think there's a lot, though. Yeah, there's there's not much. I mean, I think it's real unfortunate that um, the VO doesn't have much either. I actually couldn't mm, find any yeah. credit for the voice actress, I'm guessing. Um, maybe actor. Yeah. I think it's the same person doing Kenan's voice, by the way. Cause oh. <laughs> I can see well, that. Was, They've got that same, like, like gravelly. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I was, pre when I was pre prepping my, uh, yeah, when I was prepping my quote for today, I kept accidentally thinking of Kenan quotes because <laughs> they sound really similar. And also, I, I don't think the Kenan VO is credited either. So maybe it was a rioter at the time. Maybe it was just some rando they got on Fiverr, yeah. which didn't exist at the time, maybe. But, you know, who knows? <laughs> oh, okay. I kind of remember Fizz's voice. To the briny deep. Yeah, it does sound like Kenan. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yes, they make tridents this small. <laughs> yeah, nice crossover. <laughs> So are you Fizz? Are you fear <laughs> did he just call someone boring? Does he have any fucking idea? I will say one of the biggest disappointments about the VO was that Fizz has he's got an Omega Squad skin. And Omega Squad Teemo has some of the best oh, quotes in the so game. Good. So I was super excited to see what Fizz's like grim dark quotes were gonna be, and he doesn't have any special oh, VO for that skin. No. I was super bummed. <laughs> yeah. He what needs like a he needs like a just a, a voice, a voice update <laughs> with whoever yeah. they got to voice him for Rune Terror to come in and 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 you know, flush it out. Yeah, just go fucking crazy. <laughs> okay, Jesus, just go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I liked the audio thing. I guess I'll say the um, if if you were gonna read it, go listen to it instead because the voice <laughs> acting on it is pretty good. And yeah. they add in some some ambiance, you know, like when he talks about f the sound of you know his flippers like flapping mm. on the floor. <laughs> they they <laughs> they throw the little sound effect in of it going. Oh great! Get some wet so. slappy feet sounds. Yeah. yeah, there yeah, there's a lot of those, and the the Pike one too is very good with the sound effects because mm. you know clearly they can't show someone being murdered, but they can sound effect someone <laughs> being murdered. 
Yeah, I was trying to find who it is who does the voice for the, for that does all that narration, and I couldn't find it. But maybe mm-hmm. it's credited somewhere. Hmm. It was it was quality voice work. You see, yeah, you definitely. <laughs> it fits the character of the stories for sure. Like I can definitely imagine that dude <laughs> <laughs> swimming a mile into shore and then being tormented by having his like shoes tied and shit. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I see you have some cinematics that fits so, in. Yeah, he's part of a few cinematics. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I say that. Uh, <laughs> so he's part of the Cats vs. Dogs mm-hmm. kind of <laughs> one, which is just a, a trailer for the skins, but it's done in such a wonderful way. So fucking if good. If you haven't person. seen it, you owe it to yourself to watch it. <laughs> again, that was, I, re- I rewatched it again for this one because it was just so fucking cute. The narrators in that one, too, are just very good. Yeah. The people who are supposed to be, like, the judges of this Cats vs. Mm-hmm. Dogs show. Very good work. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, but, yeah, that's just the uh, the fuzz fizz mm-hmm. doing dog tricks. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also in the Just One More, which is, like, an animated... It's basically just, like, an animated League of Legends trailer, really. Oh. Um, it's just got five friends queuing up for game after game after game, trying to get their first W of the day, and they just can't <laughs> do it. And after every loss, someone holds up their finger. Just like, one more? One more again? Uh, How relatable. <laughs> right. In one of their first encounters, they're facing off against a low-health Fizz, who summons his alt and one-shots the five of them. <laughs> Also, very relatable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's also in the Matt Client trailer. Uh, kind of, I will say. So he's in the Matt Client trailer and Worlds Collide. And when I say he, I mean his trident yeah. in both cases. Whenever you mention either of those, I know you mean like a weapon or like an earring. <laughs> yeah. Since we already got through Mundo, who's the only actual character in the Matt Client trailer. <laughs> I guess that's not true. I guess technically Zach is in it. If, if you mm. want to. Well, when That's we get to Zach, you can bring it up then. <laughs> so close. <laughs> All right, so he is part of a handful of AU. So first one is the Forgotten Depths AU, which is, it's 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 got a lot of similarities with the, the Bilgewater um, one, but each skin here uh, represents a legend of the deep, similar to the Tall Tales of the Deep Sea. Um, so the one for this one is Atlantean Fizz. Uh, when I was young, my grandfather told me stories of Atlantis, of their high temples and great undersea army, and their great general, Fizz. Grandfather remembered it as it was, you see, and not the silent mausoleum it has become. So he's just another myth, but in a different universe. Yeah, this one actually kind of <laughs> reminded me of, like, his original lore. Like, mm. maybe Atlantean Fizz is just, like, original It's fizz. just old Fizz. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's also part of the day job skin line. Each of these are champions in their daily job routine. And this is Fisherman Fizz. Oh. Now, I'm it, the, the, the entire blurb for this is three words. Sure. Uh, he's a fisherman. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you to guess what the three words are. Oh. It is a reference to a popular fisherman-based classic novel. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know which one, what it is. Go for it. Oh, it's it's call me Fishmail. Is that not it? <laughs> I was gonna guess that. That's, is it? Oh, that? Sorry, I'll it is that. Oh yes, nice. <laughs> call me Fishmail. <laughs> <laughs> He's also part of the Voidborn <laughs> AU, uh, and this isn't technically an AU in that there's not like a lot of. Uh, specific lore for it um but just wanted to point out void boy are void born are room terran beings constructed by the watchers of the void their reason for existing is to ex- accept consume and learn all the information about rune terra necessary enough to aid for the eventual return of the watchers i just i didn't focus on that because you said void boy and all i could think about was like a boy boy void boy we need that skin I would really love that. Can someone create? Can someone draw that icon boy for boy boy, boy and yeah. it can be his new Twitch icon? Oh, that'd be great. So it's also part of Cottontail, which is set in an alternate Rune Terra where every champion is an Easter bunny. Oh my god! <laughs> and this how one's many other Cottontail Fizz? There's 
literally just, just him and Timo, Timo right? <laughs> By the way, whenever John plays Timo, he plays that Timo skin be just because he thinks it's the most infuriating one and he wants to tilt the enemy team. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> Come on, just stumbling into an Easter egg. <laughs> he's just hot as Timo hop, just hops yeah. away. Oh, he's got the hippity hop yeah. movement animation. It's pretty it's good. very good. Yeah. Uh, rising from the fluffiest depths. Oh, God, there's to a... To crush oh. all root vegetable cohorts. <laughs> Fizz commands the greatest threat carrots have ever known. A killer rabbit with the foulest and cruelest of tempers. Yeah, I guess the shark summon would... in this one is a rabbit. Yeah. It's I guess that's horrifying. Context. Yeah, I really like it. Shit. Now I want to play Fizz just to play that skin. Goddamn. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. He, is, he does come from the fluffiest depths, whatever the <laughs> hell that means. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was better than his real lore. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's also part of Super Galaxy, which actually has a fun little lore thing attached to it. Um, so this is a parallel universe uh, featuring champions as galactic superheroes. Uh, and obviously, Super Galaxy Fizz. Uh, nobody's quite sure how Fizz graduated the Super Galaxy Academy, but one thing's for certain. No other pilot or space fish can summon a mecha gigalodon from seemingly out of nowhere. Not that anyone should in the first place. Uh, and this one just has kind of a, a radio communication between uh, Vi, who's apparently in the middle of a fight, and the rest of the Super Galaxy Rangers. And it's pretty short, so I'm just going to read it. Sure. <laughs> Super Galaxy HQ, location unknown. Emergency broadcast, all channels. Kindred, report a monster is destroying downtown. Shivana. Suit up, team. Touchdown in five. Fizz. My trident will stab the sky! <laughs> Shivana. That's... What? What does that even mean? Powering up! Ah! <laughs> Why is it yelling? Please. Please stop that. Ah! <laughs> Power infinite! <laughs> Establishing connection. Neon strike enforcer. Vi. Guys, I could really use some help with this monster. Wait, who is that yelling? <laughs> Shivana, listen, we're working on it. Silence, space fish. We have to stop this abomination from destroying the city. Ah, uh, almost. Uh, oh, done. Oh, God. Uh, oh, oh, God. <laughs> Kindred, we also want to yell. Ah. <laughs> Shivana, nope, forget it. This team is the worst. I should have joined Neon Strike. Connection terminated. Vi. Hello? Anyone there? Hey. Well, shit, there goes another fucking skyscraper. Now, Did she it's, say it's worth noting that these are, you know, a, a sign, apostrophe, you know, oh, uh, pound. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. they're implied swears, so I'm just filling in the implied sure, swears. Sure, yeah. There goes another fucking skyscraper. Baron Nasher. So, are they coming? <laughs> Well, I, Fizz just did by up, the sounds man. of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> Thanks, honey. That's the best of all of it so far. Yeah. It's great. I right. got more of Fizz's personality there than in anything else. I think we all got a little bit much of Fizz's <laughs> personality. <laughs> we got a little bit of Fizz all over us. Uh, <laughs> you already made a Fizz jizz joke, John. Yeah, but that was during the warm up. We hadn't started the podcast. <laughs> I hate you so much. I like I like that our level testing is the warm up now, apparently. <laughs> the, that was the warm up podcast, the little mini podcast before the real podcast started. <sighs> what else you got? Uh it's part of Omega Squad, like mm -hmm. I mentioned. Uh this is set in an alternate reality where Bandal City's champions have formed a squad of Yordle and Yordle like fighters. When am I gonna get the Omega Lulu, by the way? Mm, soon. <sighs> Uh, so this is Omega Squad Fizz, who is the Omega Squad Saboteur. Fizz is skilled in underwater combat. It is unclear what kind of action he saw before joining up. However, as he only ever refers to the sea as a big bucket of chum. And uh, his saboteur quote, because everyone in this skin line kind of has their own like catchphrase, I guess. You can't hit what you can't target. Which is yeah, I fucking true. know Fizz. <laughs> 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 I hate playing against him. 
Uh, he's also part of Demonic, set in a demonic realm where each champion is a servant or ruler of hell. And this little devil Fizz, and his only lore blurb here is, sees a dwelling place for demons. He has a lot in common with Teemo skins. He it's does. like when they come up mm. with a Teemo skin, they're like, let's just slap it on the fish. This, fizz. Yeah. this could be Fizz. <laughs> Uh, and finally, the last one is Cats and Dogs, set in a world where cats and dogs reign, and each of the champions represent an opposing faction battling against each other. Uh, this one is Fuzz Fizz. There's something deeply unnerving about a bipedal cocker spaniel mix running around society unchecked, stabbing pedestrians with a tennis ball grabber and summoning other, bigger dogs out of the ground. And yet, here we all are, <laughs> together. <laughs> Uh, and just a fun event fact about that Cats vs. Dogs event. Uh, for that lore event, there was a bunch of like votes where people had to vote whether they wanted to back the sides of the cats mm. or the sides of the dogs. And depending on which side you backed, you'd get different quests. More players chose to back the dogs over the cats, but the players who chose cats completed a much higher percentage of missions than the dog fans did. Interesting. Yep. So... You know, John and our cat that people. Loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs are flaky. Cats are loyal. Uh, now I didn't put any quotes down. I actually just wrote down Timo quotes because I was so bummed that Fizz didn't John, have Omega. John, we're not doing quotes. Timo yet. <laughs> John, we're on Fizz. This is the Fizz episode. Yeah. But one of the no, quotes, John. <laughs> one of the quotes, did make me think of something, and I was curious. Okay. Uh, so one of the Omega Squad Teemo <laughs> quotes is, "This one's for my helmet, brother." Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, do we need a helmet bro episode? Yes. What? Absolutely yes. What? Yeah, that's a great what? fucking idea. <laughs> right? What? what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So this is this is something that's. That 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 deep sea lore. <laughs> uh, uh, so a bunch of skin art came out, and in any skin art where like uh, there was like a dead body, you'd see kind of just like a helmet on oh, the ground, okay. and it was always the same helmet. Mm -hmm. And the players kind of came up with a theory that like, what if it's just the same dude, just like helmet bro who like dies all the time but like can't be killed kind of like kenny and it's just the same person in all of these splash arts mm -hmm. and so you know they made they made abilities for him and okay the helmet shows up in a lot of splash art since then too and uh and here it is acknowledged okay in, in a quote well so. i'm not gonna remember by the time we get alphabetically to where helmet brother is so one it's of y'all far away i know helmet i know <laughs> we still have g's to get through oh geez <laughs> he's still staring at me <laughs> after that <laughs> uh, last thing i have for fizz mm -hmm. is a few fun facts oh yay um, and you may know these already, but... These better actually be fun. They are fun. <laughs> <laughs> they are facts. God, this is a lot of pressure now. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with the energy we've created in the studio. <laughs> um, so Fizz's alt, Chum the Waters, if it deals the killing blow to a champion of a small model size, like Annie or one of the Yordles, instead of them just dying, their corpse will disappear completely as if they were eaten by the giant fish all right that's pretty fun yeah <laughs> yeah i'll right, give right. you that uh and the last fun fact because i could only get two fun facts because we don't have a lot to work with here <laughs> uh before fizz's reveal in legends of runeterra his shark was named chompers uh but that seems to have been retconned in runeterra now as they have instead named his shark long tooth yeah That's neither of that plan. interesting <laughs> yeah chomperus is better long tooth uh is land before time and it will always be land before time for me long tooth oh fuck yeah oh god you're right oh shit i don't remember anyone named isn't that the name long of long tooth i could be combined i know are you thinking of like long neck sharp tooth 
Am I combining sharp long tooth. neck? Yeah, and sharp yeah. Tooth. yeah. You are. Let me double check. It's, sharp tooth is what they call right. the T Rex, and long necks is what Sarah calls the whatever those dinosaurs are called. I forgot the names. It sounded right. Little though. foot. <laughs> so I it's not from Land Before Time, but it will always be Land Before Time for me. <laughs> Accuracy. <laughs> but there's no one calls small tooth in Land Before Time. But small tooth. About, <laughs> there's sharp tooth long and tooth? long neck. What about long tooth? Sharp no. neck. No. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp neck. You guys want to do a Land Before Time podcast? Let's do Fucking that. Sharp neck. Oh my god, a Land Before Time podcast. Please no. Well, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> now I'm really like imagining this sharp neck dinosaur. I mean, there's gotta be. There's some dinosaurs with sharp necks, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh dear. All right. Are we? Are we good? This is a short one, but that's yep. going to happen sometimes. Fizz is yeah. not a lot going for him. Fizz fizzled. <laughs> you <laughs> both are just full <laughs> of this wordplay today. Uh, you got to do fucking something, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we we mm-hmm. are, by the way, mm-hmm. aware of the... <laughs> The unfortunate Dr. Mundo changes made immediately uh, after our Dr. Yeah. Mundo episode. Uh, we haven't decided exactly the format we're going to use to go back and address those. Uh, we're likely going to do kind of another shorter episode to touch on it. If it was just like a new short story, maybe not. But I heard they rewrote his bio too. So um, I don't feel like it's full episode worthy, but I don't know. But I also don't want to like tack it on to the end of an episode if like... No, but I'm thinking if they also add or change something to another champion that we've done already, we could do like a mm, look back. It'd be like, look back. Yeah. yeah, revisited Mundo and Diana, something like that. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I can dig yeah, that. Like yeah. that. Well, we may... I mean, that may be fast anyway. <laughs> Yeah, we, yeah. we may get some confirmation on that. The Diana that Leona. Diana Leona ship. Maybe, as, as much confirmation as Riot might be willing to do. So not a lot. And, uh, <laughs> we can tie it on to the Helmet Bro episode, too, if you wanted. I don't know. I'm just throwing oh, out true. ideas. Well, that's going to be its own hour and a half long thing. Oh, is it? Yeah. It is yeah. true. Is there an hour and a half worth of Helmet Bro shit? Cause He's kind of everywhere. So. <laughs> we'll put it with Earth. <laughs> oh. Ooh, yeah. Fair. Okay, I think that's it. That's Fizz. Thank you for listening. John and I do another podcast where we watch the highest rated movie and the lowest rated movie in a film series and talk about them. It's called the series of fortunate sequels. We're we're right now doing Blood Rain. It's horrible. Man, <laughs> it is the lowest rated, highest, highest rated, rated that we've ever watched, we've ever done. The really, highest rated one is a three point oh. Yeah, Crazy God, it's one of the worst. Movie. It's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait for the lowest rated one. <laughs> uh, we also have a Twitter at Loreheads if you want to chat with us there. And we post these on YouTube just under League of Loreheads there. Okay, well, join us next week when we will uh, go into the G's. We're done with the F's already. Oh, yeah. So fast. I know. Yeah. F for fast. So join us <laughs> next week when we talk about the Colossus Galio. Galio.